Hi everyone, this is the introduction chapter for the subject reinsurance and this chapter will, will explain to you what is reinsurance, uh, the functions of reinsurance and also how reinsurance is used by the insurance company if compared to the other method of co-insurance. So what is reinsurance? It is actually uh, the actions of the insurance company to transfer part of the liability that the insurance company has assumed under an original contract between the insurer and the insured to another insurance company, which is the reinsurer, in consideration for payment of reinsurance premium. In other words, insurance company has a contract with the insured and now they would like to share part of their liability with another insurance company or this is called reinsurer so it is basically a relationship between an insurance company and another insurance company and this another insurance company is also a reinsurer and the transfer of liability is not free because the insurer will have to share the original cross premium which they receive from the insured and they have to share this premium with the reinsurer. So they are sharing the risk, the original risk, and they are also sharing the original premium and they are also sharing claims. So these are the three items which is shared between the insurer and the reinsurer. Remember, they are sharing the original risk, original premium, and claims. So it is insuring again by an insurer of a risk it has already insured itself. So this is called insurance for the insurer. So reinsurer is basically a risk management method used by the insurance company to prepare again the risk of uh, insolvency because there is a possibility that the insurer is not able to pay claims future claims because they are not able because they don't have the the money to pay as simple as that so by having reinsurance uh, reinsurance will help will help the burden to pay future claims so that is basically a very simple uh, narrative for what is reinsurance so reinsurance serves to spread risk more widely. So the function or the main purpose of reinsurance is to, to spread the risk. To spread the risk as wide as possible. So that is why in the context of Malaysia, reinsurance is basically those uh, based outside Malaysia. Reinsurance companies are mostly outside Malaysia. There are a few in Malaysia, but most reinsurance transactions are done with reinsurers, which are based outside Malaysia. So it covers part of risk covered by the insurer, and as a result of this, it will reduce the insurer exposure to liquidity problems. Okay, liquidity problem, cash in hand problem. If there are huge claims, unexpected claims, insurer might not be able to pay this type of claim because they, they these claims are unexpected. They do not expect this type of claims to occur. So this might result in liquidity problem and even problem of uh, insolvency from major loss major loss or sometimes we call it catastrophic loss a uh, huge magnitude of loss in terms of uh, number okay another reason why insurer require reinsurance is because they want to achieve what is called homogeneous portfolio so what is homogeneous portfolio portfolio is a set of policy retained by the insurance company. For example here, uh, this is a portfolio of fire insurance which insure private buildings. 
So there are, in my example here, there are 11 policies in force. And here is the sum insured. And this is the sum insured for each of the individual policy. For example, for policy number one, it has a sum insured of uh, roughly 110k. And policy two has a sum insured of 150k. Policy three has a sum insured of 200k and so on. So if you look at the size of each of these policy, it is different. The size is different from one policy to another policy. So this has policy number five, for example, has the highest sum insured. And policy number six has the lowest sum insured. So in this portfolio, we can see that the size of policies are not, are not homogeneous. The size of policies for this portfolio is more like heterogeneous. Not similar when it comes to the number of sum insured. The size is not similar. Yeah? So this is something uh, which the insurer considered as uh, a problem for them. Because if the size of the portfolio for all the policies are not similar, insurer might have problem to make uh, future predictions of claim. So they are not be able to make accurate prediction of future claims. So what can they do is to transfer the risk of each of these policies to the reinsurer. So they will set eh, they will set how much will be their retention for each of the risks. For example, here the retention seems to be 110k. So insurer has said that they can only accept a risk for up to 110k. So the balance, the excess of the retention will be transferred to the reinsurer. For example, for uh, for policy number one, it has a sum insured of 100k. Uh, so it doesn't have to transfer the risk for policy number one. For policy number two. It has a sum insured of 150k, but the retention here is 110. So the balance here is transferred to the reinsurer. And so on here, the rest of the policies here, if you can see, the shaded areas here are those share of the reinsurer because they transfer all this lebihan, all this balance to the reinsurer. And as the outcome of that, you can see that the size of the portfolio is now homogeneous because it has been fixed at 110k for all the policies. So insurer achieved what is called homogeneous portfolio with the help of the reinsurer. And another thing, underwriting capacity is strengthen since the reinsurer assumes a share of the risk. So underwriting capacity is basically the capacity of the insurer to accept one risk because insurer has a limit. They cannot accept a risk with a very, very big sum insured because of their capital, they cannot accept a lot of risk. So underwriting capacity is basically uh, limited. Insurer cannot accept all type of risk with different sum insured to achieve or to enhance, to increase their capacity. What insurer can do is to obtain reinsurance. Okay, with the help of the reinsurer, the capacity is increased. Let's say capacity is set at one hundred k, one hundred thousand. With the help of reinsurer. They can accept, insurer can accept risk which is more than 100k. Okay, I will, I will come back into this later. So we continue, reinsurance is a contractual arrangement. So it is basically a contract between the insurance company and the reinsurance company. And this contract is called 3T. 3T, eh? T-R-E-A-T-Y. Okay, reinsurance company might also pass part of the risk that they have assumed from the insurer to another reinsurance company. 
So this process is called retrocession. So this is basically a contract between one reinsurer and another reinsurer. So re retrocession is a reinsurance arrangement where one reinsurer transfer all or part of the reinsurance leave it has assumed to another reinsurance company. Okay, retrocession. So reinsurance arrangement, as I mentioned earlier, is about spreading off risk to many carriers, as many as possible. And these risk carriers are the reinsurance company, which is based, some of them are in Malaysia, and some of them is outside or based outside Malaysia. So reinsurance is a risk management mechanism used by the insurance company or the seeding company. Okay, the term seeding company refers to the insurance company. And the insurer limits or restricts their risk or their claims exposure. Okay. So reinsurance cushion the effect of primary insurance losses in unprofitable years. So this is about uh, claims, future claim which is not, which is unpredictable, which is volatile. So reinsurer help to stabilize this, uh, this trend of volatility. For example, here, if you can look at this is this is the claims. So this is the claim for one year. So the claims reach the peak here, and it reaches the bottom the bottom level here and it goes up again it goes down again it goes up again so you can see the pattern of volatility of fluctuations in time so what reinsurer do what so so what reinsurer does is they will help to stabilize this pattern of claim so there is no more no more fluctuations as in this pattern here because with reinsurer the claim will be stabilized, okay? It will be flat. It will be flattened from uh, January up to December. So this excessive area here are all paid by the reinsurer. So reinsurer help to stabilize the fluctuations of claim. So primary insurer transfer to the reinsurer part of the risk which exceed their retention limit. As I show here, they will transfer all of this excessive risk to the reinsurer and they will retain some or certain portion of the original risk. So the risk transfer to the reinsurer is called seeding. A risk or known as session. So session is a process of transferring transferring risk from insurer to another reinsurer. So primary insurer seeding part of their business, and this primary insurer we call them a seeding company, or we call them a seeden, or we call them reinsured. So there are different terms used in the context of reinsurance. So the primary insurer is the one who has the contract with the original insured. So we call this insurer who transfer the risk, we call them seeding company, or we call them seeded, or we call them reinsured. Okay, so that is basically what is reinsurance.